Welcome to the Countertech Playthrough Series. We're continuing with our playthrough of Scenario 19, The Rhine, from the World at War 85 series. The module is Storming the Gap. All right, we just go straight in to the operations phase, because it's not the beginning of the game, so we don't have an initiative phase, an operations phase. We're going to draw a card. Designated Formation. This is a basically a wild card. Since it's an East German card, it can only activate an East German formation. And I think it's time to bring this bad boy onto the map. These guys are still pretty safe from uh, line of sight. So let's see, these are BMP2s. So there's three uh, platoons, so I guess a company of BMP2s and a whole bunch of BMP-1s. They're all loaded with infantry. The stats of the BMT, BMP-2s are better, as you can imagine. Um, so, you know, we're gonna hold the BMT-2s back for a second. Let's just move these guys in. So, these guys, it might be hard to see, but the movement is six. It's green, meaning they can carry infantry. And it's blue, indicating they're amphibious. Amphibious probably won't come in, it's very slow, but uh, we'll see. So anyway, they're going to come in on this road. Just go one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm looking around the map. I don't see anyone that could possibly see that guy. So we'll just go ahead and drop another, just another one. Oh, you know, uh, can you even see where he went? Yeah. So uh, we'll bring in another one. Just drop him on there. So we've got max stacking two. It's four units, but while the infantry are inside their BMP transport, it's okay. BMPs. Um, just if you're not sure what those are, it's like a it's a tracked vehicle that carries infantry. It has like a auto cannon on it and can fire missiles, similar to the U.S. Um, Army's Bradley. So here we'll bring in another stack of two. We'll just pile them up right behind. Another stack of two bread or <laughs> BMPs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Behind these towns here. So we're just getting ready to swarm things. Let's get one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the BMP twos, maybe we'll go one. Um, put two here, or one there. I'll spread the BMT twos out a little. You can see like traffic is gonna be an issue pretty soon. Um, <laughs> there are so many units coming in. So this is like a, uh, a Gaskin Sam carrying vehicle. It moves six. So, you know, it's cool. Um, we'll go, I can't even move through overstacked areas. So maybe he'll just come up on this hill here. Look at that, just keeping an eye on things around there. Same thing with the, uh, oh, we got some self-propelled artillery. We'll just drop that in there. Here's some trucks carrying um, a mortar team and 82nd, 80, 82 millimeter mortar team, I don't know, I'll just come up there, or mortar platoon, I should say. So here's another little garbage vehicle, like an all-terrain 4x4 or something, armed with uh, anti-tank uh, guided missiles. So he can go six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can join these BM that BMP. What's this? this is like a recon unit, so we can call in artillery and stuff. So maybe he'll go one, two, three, four, five. Join this shulka over here. I'm going to just, well, the colors will, hopefully you can see that a little bit. The, uh, I don't, I just need to remember which units go with which formation, but all the East Germans have a dark sort of blue, black color. So that's okay. Well, I won't mix them up with the Soviets. And then I have three T... Oh man, T-55s, uh, AM, I don't know what that means, but I guess they're up, 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 uh, teched a little bit since 1985, but they're still T-55, 1955 design. Um, we'll go one, two, three, four. They can only go five, so park two here. Wow, maybe making all these guys coming in the same spot wasn't a good idea. All right, they all came in. Um, I guess the guy with the shulka I should put underneath the shulka because we're dropping a billion X's down. Okay. 
Woo. That is the East German activation using the designated formation card, the wild card. Okay, next card. U.S. Um, helicopters. Yeah, it's helicopters. Um, there's no headquarter range, that means helicopters. Remember last turn, the helicopters didn't get to activate, so we saved an end operations card off to the side with all the units that didn't get to activate. I was using this to represent the helicopters. So this comes off of this card, okay? So one fewer formation we need to wait for to have that card go into the deck. And the helicopters are, um, they can come in from the north on either this board or this board. So, you know, we'll, we'll probably put them here. Um, I think we're going to nap it up, nap of the earth. Um, though there's nothing on the board that can harm them, so it doesn't really matter. Everyone, everyone even the anti-air stuff that's on the board, um, their ops complete. But anyway, um, we'll nap of the earth. That means 12, so I think there's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I don't have to pay to go uphill with a helicopter. 9. So the reason I'm going here because I learned my mistake on turn one flying the Soviets helicopters. Reason I'm going here is because there's a plateau effect because they're hovering right above these treetops and there's more treetops right in front of them. So the plateau effect, so no one's gonna see them um, from, from a lower area anyway, right? And then next turn when they activate, because I believe they only have one card, they're tired. I might be mixing it up, but I'm pretty sure they're tired from fighting hard, right, for weeks of fighting. So I think they only have one card. But so the next time they activate, they can pop up above these trees, two levels up, fire missiles down into here, right? So I think that's an actually a good spot for them. So I'm gonna try to find another spot that's kinda like that. Actually, I think there's one here. So we'll just come in right here, boop, nap. So yeah, we're, we're good, we're good. Okay, those guys are so tired, if I remember right. It's going to take a while for them to be able to do anything. Next card, end operations. That's okay though, because we cannot get a third end of operations until a bunch of headquarters have activated. Let's take the next card. Ooh, this guy finally activated. This is the other East German formation, morale six, range five. I'm glad I put this formation over in the this northeast section of the map because there's so much congestion down that below. Let's take this out. This is an amphibious uh, recon vehicle, yeah. You might be wondering, how the heck do I know it's a recon vehicle? Besides just looking at the, you know, being somewhat familiar with the role of this type of unit. This, this uh, is it red, orange? It's so hard for me to tell, but that color triangle means recon. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he's gonna cruise right up here. I don't see anyone that could possibly see him, so it's okay. Bring in two tanks. We're just coming in in column formation. These are T-72s, you know, de decent tanks. Designed in 1972 in general. Uh, oof. Okay, and then we got um, some anti-air support here. Some of will come in. Uh, you know, this T-72, I think he's in one. He'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Kind of lame, but it makes some room here. So one, two, three, four, five. This is farmland, cost two. Um, six, got some, uh, a BDRM. These are like just little, this is a BDRM too, I think. Um, these are just little four by four armored vehicles. This one has a SAM on the roof. This one has an anti-tank uh, guided missile on the roof. Let's bring that over here. Self-repelled artillery. We'll just park that right there. Bam. That was really easy. So just so I can, Remember, we're just going to just say all this stuff's, the entire formation's done something, um, so they're all ops complete. Next card, the uh, 8th Infantry Division B3, Bravo 3, sorry, I'm trying to sound military. Here we go. These guys were the ones trying to get on this hill. Mm, everyone that could see them, there might be one unit. No, no, there's there's probably some units I could see them if they if they poke their nose out, but let's uh you know, let's let's get these guys positioned how we want them. We'll go ahead and march these infantry. 
So infantry you have a, uh, or just anything with a NATO silhouette, uh, not a vehicle silhouette, has a different movement um, costs, has different movement costs, and it's even easier than the armor uh, or vehicles. It's just everything's one, except for rough terrain is two, and I think like burnt out or destroyed cities are two, but in general everything's one. Um, so these guys have a movement allowance of three, so we're just going to move right in here. Okay, so someone theoretically can see those guys and is not marked ops complete like one of these helicopters. Why can I not get my camera rig to focus in on that? All right. Huh. It's sort of irrelevant to the details. Don't worry, we're going to get some firing going soon. But unless special rules indicate otherwise, helicopters flying nap of the earth cannot fire their weapons. All right, I'm not even sure they could have fired on him anyway. We'll, we'll find out later when things get hot. But um, anyway, those helicopters can... Oh, they can't see him. He didn't go to the edge. I wanted to go to the edge. He was here, right? One, two, three. Yeah, I wanted to go to the edge. I want to be seen. Sorry, you probably didn't even get to see that. But I want to be seen. These guys to be seen uh, so that they can see others. And the reason is this formation has... A Stinger Sam team available, a Dragon anti-tank guided missile team available, which is fairly short range, and a very nice tow anti-tank missile um, team. So, and again, these are off map, so it's fog of war to my opponent, the uh, Soviet opponent. Um, so, but if someone moved in his range, I could just say, oh, plop, there's a tow team with that guy. You didn't know that, right? So, in fact, I'm just going to put these like diagonal like this just so we know like these go with this team because they're not color coded by team and it's hard to keep track of who has what so we'll just keep those assets we'll just know are available and they're all infantry assets are available okay so i think this unit here it's going to move half its movement points so one two three and the, by moving only half it allows it to drop its infantry out and then they can move one space i'm going to move them one space forward they're going to um, move on top of this vehicle to indicate they're not loaded inside it. And I should probably remind myself. And I also could have moved my headquarters. I chose not to. This ITV, it's a tow-carrying M113. It's probably going to be a mistake, but I'm inclined. Let's see. Go. No one can fire on him right now. One. Two, three, four, five. Right over there. And let me just make sure that's true. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. You know what? I'm going to change the pivot point on my camera rig. Hopefully you'll be able to see a little better what's going on. There we go. That does seem a little better. Okay. So what I was going to look for is like this TUD here. Can you see this guy that just drove right into that, those woods? Or did you see him when he's over here? So um, notice he's tracing through uh woods right close to him uh two woods actually those wood and the farmland so farmland is like level zero it it's a hindrance i forget the term in the game but equivalent to an advanced squad leader hindrance the woods blocked your lines of sight to things at same level um, but this guy's up on a hill the hill is two levels up so theoretically if i can draw a line of sight from here to here I think it clips, yeah, I think both of those spots. So let me let me bring this guy back. He drove right into here. And we'll keep this off to the side. He drove into there. I believe that guy can see him. Oh, uh, no, there's a plateau effect. Okay. But I, get a, I need to keep track of this. This guy here, he is on a hill, level two, looking across a little valley. He sees him because he's... It's as if they're on the same, you know, it's as if there's no hills because they're at the same level. So that was probably dumb on my part, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to roll back. I move in here. So what do we have here? This, this guy's going to see if he can take a shot. Okay. First thing we have to check, is it in range? So this is a vehicle because it is a silhouette. You may use your anti-tank capability, which is the number in the upper left-hand corner, that set of three numbers, 
against a vehicle. Certain soft vehicles, you can also use your high explosive, which is the upper right. But the, the leftmost number on each of these is the range. And I'm hoping this will actually be in focus. Let's see. Is there like a little trick I can do to make it in focus? But it's 12, 3, 4. The 12 is your range. The 3 is the number of dice you get to roll. And the 4 is your target number you want to try to hit. Okay, so we're going to see if we're in range 12. No, not quite. And where was he again? All right, just making sure you can see this. All right. So uh, let me do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it's thirteen range. This guy's actual range is twelve, but uh, it's out. Yeah, it's out of it's out of normal range. Now you can go up to double your range in most circumstances. You take a penalty. So that guy's definitely within double range. So we can see him. He's a target we're able to hit. We have ability to shoot. We might as well. So this is a nice little uh, chart for direct fire modifiers. That's basically what we're doing. We're doing a direct fire attack as an opportunity attack. So um, look, long range fire here. Our target to hit is plus one. So our our to hit is four, um, so now it's five. It's harder to hit, okay? What else we got? Uh, terrain for the defensive bonus. So, um, yeah, so basically the attacker's gonna roll three dice, because it says three here, and um, to hit on a five, okay? So let's see, it's got three dice here, right? Three dice for the attacker. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Uh, defense, okay, the defense, we look at the lower left hand corner. You always do that. Look at the lower left hand corner. Might be hard to see for you, but it's a uh, six. It's a six in a circle. Um, that means it's a lightly armored target, but a six, that grants one die, and it's gonna defend on a six. So basically if we roll a six, we cancel out a hit, okay? And the hit, these guys hit on a five. We also look at the terrain, so terrain for defense, uh, right there. I looked on the terrain effects chart, and it said a vehicle in woods gets one more die, okay? And then the only other thing I can see here, oh, there's a couple things, but concealment. Is the guy, the defender, concealed? They would get a plus one um, extra die. But uh, to be concealed, you have to be not moving, and we're moving, okay? You know, and finally, um, since that's a stack of Soviets, they can do volley fire. Soviet packed and packed allied heavy armor vehicle units only receive a plus one to a heavy armor vehicle unit firepower die in a stack with another heavy armor vehicle, the same nation, um, if they can fire. So I can get a plus one die if both units in the stack are heavy armor and from the same nationality and they're of the packed side. Um, heavy armor has two is a unit with two numbers in the lower left instead of one like this guy So they're both heavy armor. They're both from the same country. So we're gonna get another die. Okay So this gets faster. I'm just kind of describing this um, You know slowly and seeing Understand it. Here we go Okay, so if we remember the Soviets are hitting on a five Okay, they would have hit on a. They would have got three hits actually if it wasn't long range because they hit on a four normally. But since it's long range, um, the hit target gives up one, so they get one hit. Now then, remember the to, the defense to hit. <laughs> we'll call it the to to block um, was a six, and they got a six. So the fire is canceled out. Okay, so. Suppose it hit a tree, or it was so far it bounced off the 13 millimeter armor, or whatever it is. So we're going to go ahead and mark both the firers from that stack. Uh, ops complete, so they're done. This guy can continue moving. Okay, before this guy keeps going, uh, one correction I have. Uh, I did volley fire. That was a stack of units volley firing. I'm going to fix that. Um, you can't do volley fire as an opportunity fire. So I'm going to only mark one of those Soviet units as having fired, and it would have been a 
I suppose probably a complete miss, right? Also, unlike in other games like ASL, like other units can't also fire at this guy. You can get one opportunity shot per hex moved into. So this guy was going to move over here, right? And so now another unit could make an attack. So I think the guy that was stacked with him, um, that I illegally <laughs> volley fired with, will go ahead and attack. It's going to be the same basic attack. Um, the defender is going to have two dice, right? Let's see, one for one for its armor, one for being in woods. That's it. The attacker was three dice, and I was adding one for volley fire, but no. Um, and then the to hit is five, the defense is six. So we got one hit, the defense um, did not block the one hit. So all units can basically take three hits. Um, the first hit disrupts the unit. So this little disrupted marker, this guy gets marked as disrupted, he must immediately go off complete. Disrupted units can't do a whole lot, okay? So Soviets did degrade that guy. Another hit would damage the unit and a third would destroy it. Okay, so I marked the Soviet unit as ops complete as well. Let's zoom back in here. Um, guy's gonna stay there. I think this tank's gonna go one, two, three, four. And I think he might go five, six, okay? So he's not on the crest of the hill, so units below him can't see him. But he, he, units on a hill can see him. So he moved six movement points. Now let me tell you something interesting about this. The actions you can take are movement, which I just did, right? Direct fire, that's just you fire. You don't move, you fire. There's onboard and direct fire. That's basically calling in like mortars and stuff. Assault. Assault is where you move right into an enemy location. So it's a form of movement where you then assault. Then this move and fire though. That's where you're moving, and then you decide to fire while you're moving and then end your turn, or end your activation. So let me tell you about firing while you're moving, because there is a chance for this guy to fire on those guys on the other hill. If they can see him. There is a tree in the way, I think, but I just want to cover this real quick. Certain units may fire while moving. So let's come down here. That tank is a NATO unit with an orange armor-piercing value. That means it's got extra gun stabilization, computers, whatever. Um, so that means if it moves only half of its movement points available, in other words, three, it can fire with no penalty. So that's awesome. It can fire on the move. Certain units can't fire or get penalties for firing on the move. And then if it goes, moves all the way, more than half of its movement points, all the way up to its full movement point allowance, which it just did, it would get a minus one die. Right? Some units are prohibited from doing that. But so he could move here and fire. Now after moving, he's gonna go ops complete, so I might as well just fire on th those tanks down south. So let's see, let's go see if we can even see them though, you know? So this guy here. Ooh, yeah, it hits the vertex of the woods down by the Soviet unit, so he's gonna fire. On this hex, he's is he in normal range? 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Exactly normal range. So that means he gets four dice. I hope you can see this okay. Four dice. If you're watching on your phone, you probably can't. The defender, um, heavy armor, um, four dice, hitting on five. Okay, So it's pretty decent defense. And I don't see any other modifications, though um, I need to take one of these NATO dice away because of the firing after moving more than half his movement points. So this is just a long shot, right? But it's a, it's a free shot. So NATO unit hits on fives. It's got two. Soviet unit's got two um, defensive hits. What does he need again? I think he needed a five. Yes. So he needed fives. So uh, cancel each other out. No dice. He is marked ops complete. We finally have some lead or maybe uranium in the air. 
So it's starting to heat up. This formation is done. We're not going to move this um, self-propelled mortar. Time for another card. These guys, uh, the A Battalion or something. So, A, where were those guys? Ah, yes, that was the um, NATO unit that consisted of, or the American unit, of uh, three Bradley infantry fighting vehicles and a, uh, what's it called, an M901 ITV. I think there's, it's pretty clear they're safe right now to do what they want to do, so I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five, six, still in column formation. Oh, I didn't even need to follow that road, so I can go one more. Okay. And this entire formation, this will just represent the whole formation is spent. Next activation. Uh, yeah, those are the same guys, right? Yeah, same guys. All right, that's, that makes it easy. This comes off. And... I think I want to start taking up some defensive positions here. So this guy's going to drop this guy off and he can immediately move one space. And I think he's going to spend, then he, he only has half of his movement points left. So, because it spends three to do any kind of pick up drop off. It's going to move over there. And ops complete these guys. Same thing here. This guy will drop off. And I guess he'll, he'll just stay there. It's gonna move one hex. Um, this guy will drop off as well, and he'll move one hex into here. This guy, he's got six movement points. He's gonna just come into the sit town over here. And yeah, these, these all these those markers indicate everyone's moved. That was quick and dirty. It's easy for me to do these moves because. It's very clear no one can see those guys right now. If you don't believe me. There's like this, these two hills here, and there's this little tiny gap. And I'm pretty sure the only thing that can be seen is this. Um, this, this one objective marker. You know, let's just verify. Hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, that's true. Next activation, Fox. All right, Fox is one of the units that was on the Ops Complete card from last turn. So uh, yeah, let's go find them. These guys did not move last turn. So we'll just drop it here. So these are Bradleys, but they're not infantry carriers. The movement factors are in white. So I, I didn't realize they made Bradleys that were, well, there's a Abrams there, but Bradleys that are pure um, combat vehicles. Seems kind of iffy. <laughs> They're not very well armored. Not sure where we want these guys to go. I think we might shift them this way because of the large force that entered back over here. So, you know, we'll just do some movement. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Rolling downhill, it doesn't give you any particular bonus. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and this whole formation is good. Next formation. The red banded eighth ID. Okay, we've already gone once this turn. We're gonna first do this. where to throw the well here we're gonna we're gonna do this in order so th this all these markers come off so that was refresh then we're gonna command status reassign leaders to play headquarters check command effects so we have the headquarters here it's on a disrupted unit um, the range is five so one two three four so everyone's in range so we're good we're good okay so that was command status um, just Disruption removal. Check to remove disruption markers. Okay. So we have a disruption marker here. It's really on this guy. We're going to do the equivalent of rallying an advanced squad leader. Okay. 
So the morale of this unit is 7. It's going to be modified by the headquarters value of 2. So I have to roll uh, 7 or less. So the higher the number, the better. So 7 or less. And I suppose since the bonus is 2, we add 2, so that's roll a 5. Did not uh, undisrupt. So that's, that's too bad. So uh, that's a why I could have redeployed the headquarters over here, but I wanted to get that bonus to try to undisrupt that guy and failed. So what's up with disruptive units? Well, they can't directly fire or, or spot for artillery. They can't move towards um, units within line of sight, which we know there are some. So I'm inclined for this guy just to kind of plop down here, just go down that little hill. Or maybe, actually there's room here with the helicopter. So he'll go one, two, three, just get back here. Just get out of sight temporarily, wait till he's undisrupted, then maybe he'll come back. So I suppose, well, yeah, we'll mark him done here. Now this infantry unit here. Well, it just so happens he has a tow anti-tank guided missile team with him. Dropping it right there, direct fire. So again, the Soviets knew there's a team somewhere in here. It's now been revealed, okay? It's gonna fire. So um, when you do this, technically, this is two units. This guy's attached to this platoon, so it can't be separated from it. It can be transferred in another phase, but, but it's part of that infantry unit. So it's not stacked in the sense, it's free stacking. And in fact, two attacks could be made, but this infantry unit's uh, anti-armor attack, for example, or armor piercing is only one, or has a range of one. But this toe, range of 13. Let's go see what the range to a valid target is. Just take this, guy, this off down here a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's in normal range. I need to make sure I can even see that. I can. It doesn't, doesn't even click the vertex there, so we can fire. So how do I know this is an anti-tank guided missile besides the name? The firepower is green. So, yeah, that means it's a missile. So here we go. Um, the firepower is four. Okay, they hit on a four. We're going against heavy armor. Its defense is four. They defend on a five. Um, so we're looking at this. Let's go find out what the die roll modifiers are. Uh, there's only one that I see. Because they're not in any kind of terrain. This uh, orangish triangle here, the red and orange are hard to determine in low light, but this is orange. This means the T-80 has composite, no, no, reactive armor. You may have seen that in photos. It's a bunch of panels on the outside of the armor, and they explode outward when a missile is nearby, or maybe when they when the missile hits. I'm not sure, but uh, so that, that gives a plus one die. Uh, let me make sure that's true. Reactive armor. Oh, they receive a minus one to their their target number. Okay, so the Soviets hit on a four instead of a five because of their reactive armor, because of the missile coming in. Okay, so here we go. You know, I kind of love buckets of dice. So we got one hit by NATO, one block by the Soviets. So that's uneventful. Soviets don't care. So one thing we have to do though, we have to do a morale check on the American unit. So that's gonna be two dice. We need to roll seven or less. And the morale check is to see if we need to, if we fired all our missiles. Remember, this is like a team of guys with missiles. To see, did we fire all the missiles from all the launchers that they have? We rolled less than seven? No. So some of the launchers still have missiles in them. So we're good. So I'll put these guys fired. Now, I'm not doing a good job of saving guys for opportunity fire, but there's only one target here, and I just I feel like I should be able to get a hit on them. This guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Exact range. I guess should have known that already. The American tank, Hamlin Abrams, gonna fire. 
gets four dice, the defender gets four dice. It's pretty much straight shot. I don't see any bonuses of any kind. Reactive armor doesn't help against uranium rounds. I think the I think that last die that went in kind of ruined things. But American tanks, these are these are not the Abrams of today, man. They are the first variants. They don't hit very well, only on fives. Uh, no hits, no blocks. Okay, so that was a, a waste. So we're at long range. But, or I guess that was normal range, yeah, normal range. I think this infantry is going to go one, two, get up on the edge of the hill. This uh, guy, he'll just stay there. This one's going to go one, two, three, just to get behind his infantry, be ready to move him out if he needs to. Okay, what about this guy? He's good, he's good. Um, talking about the self-propelled mortar platoon there. These, remember, just as a reminder, these are just extra assets that belong to this unit. They're not, they're not located on the map yet. All right, next formation. The T-80s. So far they've handled being fired at multiple times. Um, Oh, just that guy. All right. All right. What are they going to do? You know, they're fairly safe from the hilltop over here, right? I was initially thinking they're going to come around this corner. Now, the American patent tanks backed up uh, to cover that spot. We could just go over the top and try to seize the city, but there's a lot of stuff out here, yeah? So, I need to decide what what's the best option here. Okay, what I think I'm going to do, I want at least a chunk of them to engage these American patents, the tech of the Russian tanks far superior to the patents. So I think we're going to have this guy go move one. No one can see him. Two. He is spotted. This American patent has to decide if it's going to fire. The patent's range is 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, there's normal range, 11. There's long range, 22, because you double it. There's also uh, close range. Is that what it is? I think it has a harder, harsher name. It's like, yeah, maybe it's close range. I forget. doesn't matter. That's half the range rounded down, so 5.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's still normal range right now. So the problem is, if he holds fire, waiting for it to get into close range, this guy could just fire right now. He can transfer, he can convert his move into a move, a direct fire. He'll have a slight penalty because he's already started moving, but uh, he can get the shot on. So this guy has decided, am I going to fire on him? He's got it. Okay. So, can I make, can I get this thing close? and the my camera rig trying to film a big board like this is awful. All right, we're just gonna go like this. Sorry. All right, so uh, that guy gets four dice. Right there. This guy gets um, four dice defending, and. Yeah, that's it. The American got one hit. The Soviets defended with two. Nothing. So the American is marked up to complete. Now the Soviet can just keep on moving. He's only spent two movement points. I'm inclined to convert him to a direct fire attack. He's going to get three dice, for starters, but let's see, he's moving though, so packed with orange, you get minus one if you've even moved one movement point, so he loses one of his dice. Okay, the defender, um, three dice, you know, that's, that's cool, then he's in a city. Let's see, where's my terrain modifier? I guess I'll show you this. City here. 
This is the vehicle column. Um, we come over here. Defense bonus for troops is two dice. For vehicles one. So the Americans get one more vehicle or one more die. So that's not going to be very good for the Soviets. But you know we got a lot of Soviets. We got one hit from the Soviets. Lots of defense dice from the Americans. Okay. Soviets convert. Ops complete. Starting to heat up, yeah. Next. We'll have, um, here's this guy go. One, two. I think he's technically inside of these Americans here. Yeah, he's going to taunt them. Okay, so they have the same situation, but the headquarters. That's going to be plus two dice. Um, you know, I'm expecting as the Soviets, I'll probably take a hit there. So what are we looking at? We're looking at four, one, two, three, four, five, six. So normal range, four dice, plus two for the headquarters. And then I have four armor. Okay, I'm gonna a lot of dice. Ooh, okay, so Americans, Wow, look at all those sixes. Americans hit on five, so that's three hits. Soviets defend on five, yes. So we got one hit. Yep, one hit. And that is always a disruption. And that's already disrupted. So drop a disruption marker on this guy. We will mark him ops complete. The American is also ops complete. So, because I have superior numbers, I'm able to whittle away the defenses here. A lot of this game, so I've read, is you want to have lots of guys able to hit a small area. If you just have a few guys, the, the one with greater numbers is going to prevail in general. For example, this guy here is going to go one, two, three, right there, okay? These guys have already fired, yeah? and. We come up here and just check things out a little more. Oh, all my little blocks on my camera are just so loose. Gotta fix this. Um, sorry about this. Um, if he took out one more move forward, these guys, or he, he would be able to see him, but he's not. He's just gonna hang out here. So he didn't go over half his movement factors. Um, so he's going to fire. He gets minus one, so it's going to only get two dice. He's going to fire on this guy who gets four dice defense. One for the city, three for his armor. It's not a very good ratio, but hey, we could just get lucky. Uh, no hits. Not lucky today. Go ahead and do this. This guy, same thing, going against the same target. One hit each, or one hit, one block. So, you know, I'm still learning this game. It's probably not the best way to go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah. Ah. Check out the range of the Soviet unit is 12, Americans 11. So the Soviet unit was at close range. So his two hits would have been increased to, or decreased to three. Let's go look at this again. So his to hits, or his to hit is four, but it was decreased to three by being within uh, close range. So uh, I actually got two hits. And so this guy is disrupted. Okay, that's good, starting to, things are starting to degrade a little. Now I have a traffic jam over here though. This guy, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see what the situation is here. Oh, he's on the plateau, doesn't matter. Uh, does he wanna poke his nose out? Six, this is flat terrain here. Let me make sure that's not a lie. That is rough. Am I missing rough? Here's rough. 
right here, rough. Come over here. It's an obstruction rather than a blocking terrain. It's sort of like um, hindrance in ASL. So you can see right over that. Does anyone want to take a stab at this guy? I don't think these guys have anything good. What's a dragon missile? Dragon missile support. Um, the guys up, yeah. You know, guys up on the hill. Do these infantry want to fire? Well, they have a dragon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They could actually fire on him. Um, I don't want to. I want to keep someone with opportunity fire available. Okay, so that guy, he moved his entire movement allowance. Soviet did. Check out Soviet units with orange, you know, stabilized guns. Oh, they can fire. They get minus two. So notice NATO only gets minus one if they move all their movement points. So it's minus two. Uh, they only get three dice. So they'd be down to one die firing at someone. It'd have to be over there. One, two, three, four. I'd rather just leave them. Well, actually there's no point in not doing this. Okay, so he can see this infantry here. He has a range of six. Infantry's soft target. So you have to use high explosive attack. High explosive attack range is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it'd be double range. So the number of dice I have is three. But the to hit is five. Well, it's going to go up to six. Okay. And then I lose two dice for being on the move. So we're looking at one die. This guy also gets one die. He has no terrain. He's on the same level. So here we go. My, this, is, this is worth doing, I think. <laughs> no hits. He's gonna ops complete anyway, so might as well take the shot, yeah? I think his buddy down below, let's see, we can see the infantry, yes. His buddy down below, one, two, three, four, five, six, same thing. Okay, got a hit on the American. Throw it right there. And uh, he's ops complete. Okay, what else do I have going on down here? I think I want to bring this Shulka up here with an anti aircraft gun. Um, it's going to be ops complete, but if I can activate again, I can be prepared for the American helicopters. I have these two guys here. I like these two guys here. Um, so maybe this guy's gonna go one. There's really no one that can see him right now. Two, three, four. Five, six. Can anyone see him? I don't see anyone that can see him. That's capable of firing. Oh, maybe, maybe. This West German Leopard. Yep. I think the West Germans should take the shot. Let's make sure their range is decent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Their range is 14, so it's going to be normal range. Their um, number of attack dice is four. Um, I see no other modifiers. So uh, the line of sight is traced through um, through and into farmland here. Farmland is obscuring terrain. So basically if you trace through two obscuring terrains, line of sight's blocked. That's it. There's no die roll modifiers. Um, farmland gives a defense benefit to infantry. It does not give it to vehicles. So these guys defend on four dice. On five, this is four on three. Ooh, the leopard's got a... Pretty strong advantage here. Um, Germans hit on threes, man. That leopard is a nice tank, apparently. Um, Soviets defend on ooh, two hits. Ooh, stay away from leopards, huh? Two hits. Okay, so this guy is disrupted and flipped. Okay, so he's 
lost half his tanks. I don't know what a platoon of Soviet tanks is, four or five. So he's lost two to three tanks and must stop moving. And the German tank is ops complete though. Next, this guy, one, two, three, four, five, six. And Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this guy could make a regular fire attack. He'd only have one die against the against the German. One die. What's the German defense? It's four hitting on fives. I mean, might as well, yeah. Plus one for the forest. I mean, this is a dumb attack. But there's no harm in doing it from what I can tell. But yeah, it's, it's basically what I figured. Um, yeah, it's done. We've got these guys still in the hill here. I think I want to push them up rather than letting, keeping them ops complete or uh, available for opportunity fire. Move them as a stack. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see, they're at level two. These guys theoretically can see them. Let's talk about blind hexes. See if we can even let's pretend there's no terrain. Could I see this guy? Yes. Okay. So the pattern can see him. Alright, um, can you see the pattern? Yes. Can you see this guy? Yes. Okay. So let's pretend the pattern was gonna fire on this guy. This guy's two levels up, which means he, he, he might be able to see him over the one level thing. Another another way to look at it. Let's let's go from this point of view. I might be able to see the pattern. There is some blocking terrain in between, so we have to decide, um, is the blocking terrain in my way to see that pattern? So you count the number of hexes to the blocking terrain. One, two, three, okay? That blocking terrain casts a shadow, well, sh well shall we say, of, of just areas you can't see, equal to the distance to it. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So this area back here is obscured, uh, you know, blocked by this, but not this. So we can just, just see off in the distance this guy in the woods, okay? Which means the reverse is true as well. All right, so one, two, three, four. Um, yeah, reverse is true as well. So I think this, I'm pretty sure, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this guy can fire on him. Um, so that's gonna be four dice for NATO, okay? The range is not five or less. The defender is going to get four dice, plus he's higher than the attacker. So you basically get a, a little bonus there for the hill. Uh, I guess it's like a hold down effect. Okay, um, so yeah, let's do this. Oops, here we go. Okay, NATO's hitting on fives, no hits. Lots of blocks. It's too bad. Man, NATO's gunnery is not so hot. Okay, this was a stack moving together. Um, they could fire. Might, why not, yeah? It's gonna be one die. Yeah, I'm not even gonna bother. One die. Um, I mean, it's just not fun. I, I know mathematically there is a chance I'll get it in on someone. It's just not fun. All right, uh, so it looks like the whole T80 formation is completed. All right, next formation. Soviet helicopters. Where are those guys? Right here. Hey, before we do this, I actually took a little break uh, from filming um, after activating the helicopters, so we'll still process them, but uh, let's talk about a few things. Someone um, on the comments of the first video, they pointed out that even though this scenario has three end operations cards, you still end the turn when the second one is drawn. Um, on turn one, I ended it only when the third one was drawn. So turn one should have ended even earlier. So three cards, but only two to end the turn. So since it's a big scenario, I guess that's why you throw three cards in. 
Um, but I still do have uh, headquarters on an end operations card, so in that case, the second card won't trigger. Uh, what else? Ah, yes. Um, It'll be noted in the video, or I suppose was by this point. But uh, when the T80 formation activated, I should have done a command status uh, phase and dropped the headquarters down. I don't know, we'll just... Um, where would I have dropped it? I think I would have dropped it on one of the middle ones so we can keep everyone sort of in range there. So I dropped it there. What, else, what other error did I catch? Ah, uh, yeah, this, this uh, headquarters with the disrupted uh, ITV. Um, I actually succeeded in my role. I was just brain dead. Um, and he was here and probably would have, where was it here or here? I think it was here. I think he would have just stayed there. He probably would have fired a shot off, but whatever. I normally don't like correcting things, but just this game's easy enough. Uh, gonna correct it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, I, I've had a few spots where I like miscounted movement and stuff or Forgot there's a road, but okay. So I think though I'm, I'm content to think about these Soviet helicopters. Please note, helicopters don't have a headquarters; they are always in command. Um, we're going to go ahead and activate this guy first, and see what he can see. Remember, I'm trying to get these guys in a spot where they can do like, you know, in real life, helicopters like hide out of sight, pop up, fire some missiles, pop back down. This game, it's sort of spans a few, across several activations to perform that action, but I'm inclined to maybe try to take out this Lukes over here, that recon unit, because that recon unit, uh, it'll, recon units are always in command, and they may call in uh, artillery strikes, so probably should take him out before he can call an artillery strike on my helicopters. This guy's going to flip to hovering, I guess not a flip. Hey, by the way, this game, the designer, or designers, they don't like a chit ever having two purposes, <laughs> uh, which I actually kind of like. So um, there's no like marker with something else on the back. Um, all right, actually, I don't need a marker though to hover. So this guy, by removing that nap of the earth, he's flying, but I'm changing my mode actually to hover. So it's got an H here. So that means he was down just above the ground level. He's now up one level. If sort of simulating that there. Right, and what that meant was his armor-piercing weapons are now uh, able to be fired. Look at that, 17 range, it's a green number, which means it's missiles uh, hit on four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's normal range. So uh, what did I say that? We said we got four going after Luke's. The Luke's is uh, lightly armored. Looks like it just gets a six. And a vehicle in the woods um, gets an extra die. So this guy's pretty vulnerable. Uh, does not have reactive armor. The little triangle almost looks orange, or whatever the uh, reactive armor or composite armor bonus is. It actually, that's a recon icon. There we go. One more. Okay. So we sit on a four. Ooh, that's actually pretty nice. Luke's needed a six. That's two hits on the Luke's. Luke's probably should not have poked its nose out, yeah. Um, let's see, so first hit disrupts, second hit flips. Okay. Oh, hold on. I could, when a helicopter changes its status, when it activates, that can incur opportunity fire. So let's just remember that happened, okay. But let's say the Luke's was gonna respond first. Let me see if I can even see this on camera. Probably not, but yeah. So this guy in hovering mode is lightly armored, which means um, I need to go double check, but I believe either firepower can be used on that. His range is three for armor piercing, four for high explosives, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Doesn't matter, well, someday we'll learn that rule. Uh, but it is out of sight. I don't see anyone else that can see this guy hovering. I don't. So, all right, so it, the hit stands, that guy's damaged and disrupted. 
He fired missiles. And remember, it's not just one helicopter, it's a group of helicopters. Their morale is seven per their card. We're going to see if they fired all their missiles, seven or less here. They did fire all their missiles. So we threw a reloading missiles marker on the helicopters. This seems a little odd to me because I don't believe helicopters reload missiles. <laughs> Uh, so let's just say it's some kind of abstraction of they did their pop-up attack and now they're out of position, right? Uh, they've, they've popped back down or something. Whatever. So, uh, yeah. Do they carry extra missiles? I don't think so. Uh, so, uh, anyway, that's one little quirk of abstractions, I guess. I am running. I just ran out of X markers. So, uh, you know... I'll just steal some of it from here. So there's that. Okay, now the other helicopter, this guy. Um, I believe he can see some fun stuff. For example, well, here, look, I'm gonna, yeah, I can check line of sight anytime I want. I'm so used to ASL where it's like you only do it when you're really sure. Um, yeah, so we can see that Abrams. You can also see this guy. Uh, the M1, the, this was the, uh, sort of hanging out there, the ITV, the, it's an M113 with tow missiles mounted on top. I think we can see that guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm at level one. He's at level two because he's on a hill. Hills are level two. So I'm actually below the hill, but he is on the, uh, hill's edge. So I can see him. So we'll go ahead and drop the nap of the earth status. We'll flip to hovering. Opportunity fire is possible. No one, I can't see anyone with the possibility of seeing him. Pretty sure I'm within range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, 13. My range is 17. Did I clip a hill? Oh, what am I doing? I clipped a hill right there. All right, so, oh, but I can hit the Abrams. I can hit the Abrams going this way. All right, so uh, yeah, we're doing a, let me, huh. I'm trying to remember if I had the right number of dice. I'm, I may not have on the, oh yeah, I did, I did. All right, so um, this guy gets an attack of four. He, that wasn't my roll. He's going against an Abrams, which has armor of four. Abrams hits on a five. He hits on a four. These are anti-tank missiles against an orange, or a, yeah, the orange triangle, which means for the NATO unit, composite armor, so fancy armor, so they're designed to defeat missiles, which means NATO hits on a, blocks on a four instead of a five. The arm, the NATO's troops are in woods and they're above. Okay, so this is actually not that great of an attack. Okay, so NATO, I said hit blocks on fours. The, uh, what did we hit on? We hit on fours. So, oh, I need to check one more thing. I think there's one more die roll modifier. I think these, I might only hit on fives. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is a full block. Let's see what I'm talking about. So, this is the die roll modifiers. There's the composite reactive armor, the to, to, the to block value is minus one, which I did. Um, there it goes. ATGM, anti-tank guided missile, direct fire, which I'm doing, at a target in blocking terrain. Yes, the woods. Uh, it's 1d6 defensive bonus to targets in woods, okay. Oh, so NATO should have gotten another die, but okay. There's one more. Ah, they're concealed. Geez, another die. All right, I'm really screwing up here. I need to look at this. But that's not even what I was looking for. Oh, I guess this is what it is. So, you know, there's already defensive terrain bonus, but if it's a guided missile going into that defensive terrain, it's even more defense. So, um, I think I should have rolled two more dice for NATO, which is ridiculous. Uh, and I don't think there's a maximum number of dice. Any? And the most dice you can add for terrain is two. Okay, sorry, that was kind of messy. I have Apologize, but let's roll this guy's morale to see if he fired all his missiles and needs to quote reload. 
Uh, he has to reload too. That's an eight. His morale is seven. And you know, abstract again. I'm gonna grab a X from somewhere else. Okay, that formation's done. Next, the uh, West German Leopard Platoon or Battalion, whatever that is, company. Uh, seven five. Let's find these guys. Now this might be the best unit on the map for NATO. I remember those, those leopards seem pretty solid. So these guys down here. Where do I want my headquarters to go? Well, I know this guy can see someone. This guy can probably not. So we're going to drop the headquarters on the guy that can see. Then we're going to do command or, or refresh. Take this off. You can see this guy almost, yeah. Come on, camera. There we go. Um, yeah, so I moved the headquarters to this guy, we refreshed. There's no one in need of any other actions here, because everyone's within range 5, so they're all in command. So we'll, besides putting the headquarters here to get like a bonus when firing, I can also take advantage of a headquarters being able to call in off-board artillery. Um, where do we see that? Where do we see that? Off-board artillery strikes is something that happens after your move, disruption, missile reload, command status, all this. So I can execute up to two off-board artillery strikes. So off-board only recon and headquarters and certain kinds of other units can spot for the off-board artillery. So we're going to say this guy, we know he can see him. So this headquarters is going to spot for at least one off-board artillery strike. Let's go see what the Germans have available to them. Let's get this light out of the way. <laughs> Um, so, uh, remember it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the Americans and the Germans. I mean, there's no markers, like color-coded markers, which would be nice, by the way, guys, just, just saying. Um, so I put the Americans on the top, so the Germans on the bottom. So the Germans have three high explosive attacks, which can harm armor. Um, they have one, d uh, DP ICM, those are like submunitions, like very small little shells and bomblets um, that can harm both armor and infantry. They're not as good as high explosive, which I'm kind of surprised at. Like, why bother then? But um, at this time, it, the rules say uh, they had a high failure rate. So let's check out what the German strength is. It's 3-4, so that's going to be, we roll three dice hitting on four, right? Um, we're going to reduce their strike by one, okay? Um, which will mean the Germans have run out of DPICM. Let's come back over here. And what was our target again? Oh yeah, this guy is targeting him. So what we do, we place a fire for effect marker on our target hex. We're going to roll one die to see if there's Scatter. Let's see if we can make that go where I want it to go. I got it. Well, on a one to five, there is no scatter, and we got a six, so there's going to be some scatter. So what we do is roll another die to see the direction of scatter. It's a three. Uh, yeah, three. And we just check. I think it's a little compass deal. Three is southeast. This is north, so. Uh, um, hmm, which way is north? <laughs> I guess uh, we'll call this north here, even though it's like off-kilter a little bit. So we'll go... Um, oh, I guess I can just rotate two to the right. So we'll go... Uh, I'll just say... Eh, this, I, that's southeast. Come on. That's southeast. All right. Uh, there's probably some specific rule for how you handle this situation where you don't know where north is perfectly. But I'm going to call it... If that's north... All right. That's east. That's southeast. Okay. Uh, then you, since it's scattered, we roll to see if it's horrible scatter. And I rolled a five. In this case, the second roll, um, the second roll is a four or five. The firefighter fire, martyr scatters another hex. Roll again. Roll for direction as above. Got a six. That is. Northwest. If this seems tedious, I mean, five out of six times you would skip all this. So, northwest. Okay. So I think that's easy here. So my fire for effect marker goes like this. 
If it's still unmapped, the resolution of the strike proceeds against any units in the new location. Okay, this kind of strike, just it's a very narrow area, boom, 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 boom. Um, I looked at the rules, see if anything can happen, if there's nothing there. In this particular case, the answer is no. That's a wasted strike. Poor targeting by the West Germans. Now, um, when your formation activates, it may call in two off-board artillery strikes. I think I might want to do one more. Yeah, I think I will. I mean, part of me is afraid of wait, running out of these strikes when the battle's barely even started, but let's get some T-80s knocked out early. So I'm dropping the Germans. West Germans number of strikes from three to um, two. The strength of a high explosive strike is three, four, just like that DPICM one. Um, fire for effect on the same guy. Let's roll for uh, drift. The procedure is basically the same. Okay, we did not roll a six, so we are spot on. So I said there's we roll three dice hitting on fours. We hit three. Time to go look up what that means. All right, so uh, I checked it out. So these guys do get defensive dice. We don't get to use our armor value of four. In other words, we don't get to roll four dice, but our target value will be five. So we look at the armor to find out the target value. Okay, and so we don't get any, uh, well, we, get, we, we ignore our armor, but we can use the terrain. Turns out cultivated gives zero to vehicles, gives one die. To infantry. So cultivate is good for infantry, not so good for vehicles. Um, so that's zero for terrain. Uh, I checked if the terrain is concealing terrain, and it is for infantry, not for vehicles. So again, um, cultivated good for infantry. Vehicles, not so much. So there's still zero dice. Get one just for being yourself, for being a vehicle, or heavy, heavy or light armored vehicle. So you get one defensive die there. And uh, if we recall correctly, I had uh, three hits, and I actually used red dice, which is an abomination. Uh, but okay, so here's the Soviet die. This is actually only for the top unit here, because I need. I actually checked the rules, double checked. I need to um, roll individually for each unit. So this is a miss because the ar their armor's five. There are three hits. So this guy takes three hits, and is absolutely obliterated. It's going to go to the casualties box. Doesn't matter in this scenario. Absolutely obliterated. Three hits. Interestingly, uh, farmland or cultivated is not like a, a fire hazard type of terrain. If that landed in woods or a city, it would probably cause a fire, if I recall correctly. Because three hits to a terrain, burnable terrain, causes a fire. Anyway, uh, we've got to do another attack. We'll use the proper dice again here. Okay, that's. Uh, two hits. Wow, off-board artillery is amazing, huh? I was just making sure the degraded tank still has the same armor value of five. Okay, so um, two hits. He's already disrupted, so we, we... That guy's obliterated as well. Wow. Okay, I now respect high explosive artillery. And this is gone. No longer need a fire for effect marker. And that was great, and it does not spend the unit. This is just the headquarters being a headquarters, you know, doing what they're supposed to do. Wow, that was awesome. All right, so uh, am I missing something? What am I missing? Ah, yes. That leaves wrecks in this area. Wrecks are basically a terrain feature. It's, uh, I believe, obscuring terrain. Probably gives some defensive benefit. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Now for the... German actual movement and things. So I've just decided these guys are amazing. They hit on threes. Um, they, they're in a pretty good position too. Like this guy can hit out a little bit out to here. Like he just called in the artillery. We'll keep that guy there. I think I want this guy. He's in the open right now. No one can see him right now. He's gonna go one, two, three, four. And I like that because you just get this narrow window up this way. I doubt the Soviets will come over here. You can't cross the river uh, with tanks anyway. But he's got a good, you know, once that city falls, he's got a good shot up here. Um, I think we'll keep this guy here. And we get this 
this guy here, huh? I think I think this guy's gonna go one. Um, what are these cities? It's, oh, all the Soviets are spent, so it doesn't matter. He's gonna come back. Let's see, that was one, two, three, four, five, six. Just come here, kind of help the Americans. Um, eventually, keep this guy here. We got this anti-tank mobile gun kind of thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we'll just bring it around here. Um, we have a Roland and a Gepard. These are some nice anti-aircraft units. I think we'll bring the Gepard up. Uh, hmm, hmm. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. I'm trying to make sure they stay within range of the German headquarters, which is five. So I guess we'll leave one there. Maybe we'll bring the Gepard up. One, two. Let's get him down here with these guys. We'll just park it, park it here and just hope for the best. Okay, all these guys are done. Running out of markers. I actually have the expansion to this game, um, which I think comes with more X's, so I'm, I might have to bust those out uh, next time I play because I'm running out quite frequently now. Okay, next card, and just as a reminder why we're not ending the turn yet is we have two end operations cards, which should normally end the turn, but the East Germans still have headquarters that haven't activated, and they didn't activate turn one, which is why they're sitting here. You're guaranteed one activation. Um, am I lying? They've both gone, haven't they? Wow, I really screwed up. All you guys that are kind of watched up to this point commenting on the video about this apologies so these guys have already gone shoot all right hey i'm learning the game i don't have like the the flow down quite right yeah so i'm gonna go just drop these in some decent spot we're gonna say the turn ended okay well that was a big screw up all right no wonder this turn's so long all right um it's embarrassing hey keep your eye out on the next turn um, I'm hoping to not make any mistakes. We'll see. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.